In the summer of 1975, Swansea City Football Club had reached their lowest ebb, finishing third from bottom of the fourth division and having to apply for re-election to the Football League. During the following two seasons, manager Harry Griffith strengthened his struggling side and laid the foundations for further development. But for this to be achieved, the club sought a younger and more dynamic manager, and following much fruitless searching, a helping hand arrived from a most unlikely source. John Toshak's career at Liverpool was coming to an end, and with his desire to return to Wales, the probability of him going home to Cardiff City seemed the most likely option. During his time at Cardiff, the young Toshak had dazzled the Ninian Park crowd with displays of goal-scoring brilliance, and there'd been feelings of dismay and anger when he finally departed for Liverpool. Bill Shankly had come in with an offer of £110,000, but was to comment later that he would have been cheap at a million. Toshak. Toshak. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. However, on returning to Ninian Park in 1978 for talks, Toshak was unconvinced of the club's ambitions. That proved a most fortunate decision as far as Swansea were concerned, and they were quick to seize the opportunity. Toshak made his debut at the Vetch on the 3rd of March 1978 against the league leaders Watford. The occasion brought the largest crowd for five seasons. In stark contrast to the teams that Toshak had grown accustomed to playing against and the big venues on which he had paraded his talents, he now had to turn his mind to the more basic demands of the 4th Division. However, attractive football and good results brought back the crowds and following his debut, home league attendances never fell below 7,000. The historic promotion trail began with victory in the last game of the 77-78 season against Halifax Town, four days after the tragic death of Harry Griffiths on the morning of the game against Scunthorpe. John Toshak and Alan Curtis scored against Halifax to bring the first promotion celebrations to the Vetch. New faces were always appearing as Toshak began building a team to challenge the finest clubs in the land. The young manager often went back to Liverpool for old teammates, and soon the Anfield connection, as it became known, was in evidence, starting with Tommy Smith and Ian Callaghan. Once again, it was the last game of the season that secured further celebrations at the Vetch, when Toshak himself scored the winning goal against Chesterfield in May 1979 to bring second division football back to Swansea, for the first time in 14 years. As Toshak continued to strengthen his squad, the dream of first division football being played in Swansea was growing stronger with each result, and on the 2nd of May 1981, that dream was achieved. 10,000 Swansea supporters traveled to Preston to watch one of the greatest and most exciting games in the club's history. James, got a bit of time now, perhaps a little space, we'll take the man on, does so cleverly, Leighton James, it's there! The Swansea fans love that, and Robinson, good skill, might try one. And can the goalkeeper stop it? He can't, it's Craig. And Swansea now exultant. Hasn't had too much success down that left wing, Houston. He's either had Robbie James or mostly Robinson to contend with and they've come off best so far. Difficult one for the goalkeeper. Chance. Alex Bruce. Five minutes to go. What's happening to you? That's what John Toshek wants to know. It's not the Swansea we saw in the first half. So Swansea come away with Curtis. There's a Swansea player hurt in their own penalty area at the moment. But here's Curtis. Now Robbie James with space. Charles. Surely the first division signed, sealed and delivered by Jeremy Charles. 
Following a triumphant bus stop ride through the streets of Swansea, Toshek and his players attended a civic reception where he made his future intentions clear. Rehearsals have gone well today for next season <laughs> because I can assure you that this is only the start. There was a buzz of excitement in Swansea throughout the summer of 81 as the club prepared for the challenge that lay ahead. Toshak had half a million pounds to spend on new talent with a goalkeeper, defender and striker needed. The new arrivals were English international Bob Latchford from Everton for £125,000, Welsh international goalkeeper Di Davis from Wrexham for 45000 and central defender Colin Irwin, yet another ex-Anfield player for whom Toshak paid a record 350000 the first six-figure fee for a non-international. Swansea now boasted a £1 million lineup, and on Saturday, the 29th of August 1981, the Swans played their first game in Division I at home to Leeds United. 23,489 spectators turned up to watch one of the greatest occasions in the club's history. When the fixture list actually came out and it, it actually showed that we were playing against Leeds United, the first of all, I couldn't believe it. I was told beforehand that we were playing Leeds, but to be honest, I, I didn't believe it. I thought people were just sort of teasing me. Uh, but obviously, for, from a personal point of view, uh, it was a great start to the season to play against your old club. I had left them the previous Christmas uh, to join Swansea and we actually got promotion to play in the first division. And of course, I mean, to actually play against them in the first game was obviously going to be a special game for me. We're ready to go. Swansea to kick off, playing from right to left, the all-white strip on a warm, balmy afternoon. Certainly not the weather to start a football season, but the pitch inviting, and certainly inviting quality football, and I'm sure we'll see it here this afternoon, but not a day for running about helter-skelter. The long ball downfield to Leighton James. Kevin Hurd, the right back for Leeds United. No chance for James to get there. Leighton James, who scored 15 league goals for Swansea last season. Alan Curtis, number six, Trevor Cherry, Leeds United, getting it away. Alan Curtis to the byline with a chance to cross it. Beautifully held by John Lukic. Alan Curtis with a left foot volley, testing Lukic. New captain for Swansea, Colin Irwin. Alan Curtis. Ball half there before Latchford. In fact, Latchford had no chance at all. Leighton James. Oh, beautiful ball. Curtis, if he can get around Cherry. Well, choosing a beautiful... Oh, that's a lovely dummy, and it could be a goal, it is! Jamie Charles got it! Jamie Charles! A move which started down the left, Leighton James down to Alan Curtis. A cross on the deck, a lovely dummy by Latchford. Charles was behind it. Lukic in the end had no chance at all. Swansea take the lead. That's the score after just a couple of minutes, five minutes in fact. What a marvellous start for the home team. Brian Flynn for Leeds United, beaten by Rakovic. And a free kick given for Hans. Leighton James. And Curtis on that left wing again. It's a nice ball, good running by Latchford. So much good understanding with this Swansea team. That's the average. Great acceleration. Lovely cross, and Jerry Mitchell was almost there. It was Eddie Gray who thwarted him. Neil Robinson coming in. And I saw a handball. So did the linesman. Referee as well. The quick free kick then. Carl Harris. Heard. Well, almost a successful one two with Brian Flynn. Harris. Danger for the Swans. Oh, that should be a chance. In fact, it's a goal. Derek Parlane, an easy, easy goal. Parlane presented with a simple, simple header. In fact, 
It was started with an attempted one to between Heard and Brian Flynn. The ball going loose, the cross coming in, finding the Swans defence uh, hopelessly out of position. Ty Davis in the Swansea goal there, let down really by some incompetent play by his defenders. Harris on the right getting it. Rykovic to beat, does it well, easily to the byline, almost. Good cross. Oh, that's a beautiful header. And Swansea was... Swansea were absolutely lucky then. Harris's cross met by the head of Arthur Graham. Hitting that far post with Di Davis beaten. Rykovic is there. Gray there before Alan Curtis. But, uh, kindly bounce, Robbie James. Curtis going forward on his left, Latchford, if he can power through, and was it a penalty? Well, the referee said no. The Swansea players thought it was, certainly. That certainly was a dodgy one. Meanwhile, the game goes on. Gosh, that's some kick. James. Curtis right, Charles in the middle, and that's a beautiful ball, right inside the fullback, Curtis is growing in left footed, Kukic stretching and behind him was Latchford, nice bit of goalkeeping by these youngsters. And Curtis right at the stroke of half time, creating a few problems for Kukic dealt with properly but the score at half time is 1-1 this big crowd certainly enjoying the afternoon there's been some good football some near misses as we wait the start of the second half Leeds United on the ball this one's to remember in the all white strip and if uh, you in fact uh, Leeds United playing in their change yellow strip which might be just a little difficult to pick up if you've got a black and white set. One one with everything to play for. And just remember that uh, this current season is three points for a win, one point for a draw. But uh, I'm sure that Swans, whilst going all out for three points, uh, might be just a little satisfied to get a point out of this. Chance for a goal, the ball, what a goal! What a goal for Bob Blatchford! What a goal, what a shot! A quick start by Swansea City in the second half, certainly. Robbie James certainly involved, that ball coming across from right to left, met by big Bob Blatchford. And John Lukic certainly had no chance in the Leeds goal. Colin Owen with a header. And Swansea possession. Leighton James. What about that for a ball? It's perfect. What a great ball. Alan Curtis. Trying to get past uh, Frank Gray. He does so. But the angle much too tight. Curtis had to do it all eventually. Going past Frank Gray. The shot going in. Lukic was there. And the corner kick conceded. And how low, how uh, Alan Curtis would love to score against his own club. Leighton James's corner kick. Turning one in. Eddie Gray with the clearance. Good in the circumstances, but finding only Robinson who's gone forward, trying to meet that pass from Robbie James. James there again. Leighton James. Robinson across the face and it was Latchford with a, another goal for Swansea City Latchford again on the near post Robinson again involved Robbie James too the cross coming in and that big man there to meet it James, ball bounced rather awkwardly, but the control was there, and the run is there now with Curtis on his left, but only two Swansea men up. 
James, oh, that was the, the attempt. It was a little chip over Lukic, and he wasn't quite lucky enough. He really had no alternative. He had to come inside and try to chip one. still in play. Heard for Leeds. Trevor Cherry. Frank Gray. Mahoney. Robbie James taking it up for Swansea. Matchford. Leighton James. Good run by Curtis. So intelligent. Eddie Gray, Cherry, oh, that's, that was a very clever piece of thinking by Curtis. In the end, he got uh, stopped, wins a free kick. But uh, really, that quality of football deserved a better fate than just a free kick. Newton James again, on the ball, on the set piece. Latchford's head out to go! So easy! Latchford, a hat-trick in the second half. How marvellous for him. And that again was pretty easy. A free kick for Swansea. Taken by Leighton James. So accurate. And it, that man's head did the rest. in before Harris the feed to Alan Curtis perfect Cherry's with him oh what a sidestep what a shot and what a goal Alan Curtis and more than anybody he wanted to score this afternoon given the ball by Rykovic in space, a marvellous sidestep past Cherry and a bristling shot which Lukic could do very little about. Look at that scoreline, Swansea 5, Leeds United 1. 26 minutes gone in the second half and who would have thought we'd been witnessing uh, that sort of score at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Frank Gray. Flynn was never stopped working. Eddie Gray. Frank Gray. Uh, thing to happen against a former club Alan Curtis the scorer of the fifth goal so we're into injury time the first ever game in the first division at the Vetch field and it's all over now a great win for Swansea City 5-1 it was 5-1 let me repeat Swansea delighting their supporters delighting that man John Toshak with him Phil Bosner a hat-trick from Bob Latchford, whom they got in the close season after half time. One from Jeremy Charles, one from Alan Curtis. Handshakes all round. A gala day indeed. And that's it, look. Swansea City 5, Leeds United 1. As pleased as we are that we've got off to such an impressive start, um, you know, we realise that there's a lot of hard work to be done here if we're to establish ourselves at the highest level. I, I felt a little bit for Leeds today, actually, because it's never nice to start the first day of the season. Uh, with a hammering like that, but the, the, really the way that we played second half, it, it could have been anybody, we, we really were unstoppable. The Leeds United game was, was the biggest game, and the one that I would say, apart from my sons being born, that's the, be the best feeling I've ever had.
when I look back even now on the video and it's uh, it's obviously a real special day, a special goal, a special occasion. In their next fixture away to Brighton and Hove Albion, Swansea gained another three points, with Leighton James and Bob Latchford scoring to win the game 2-1. Their fans were delighted that they were top of the division, even though it was still unofficial after only two games. But amongst the jubilation of early triumphs, there were the doubters, and when in the next game against West Bromwich, Swans crashed 4-1, the fans began to wonder if the bubble had burst. Morale was boosted during the week following that defeat when it was announced that six players had been selected to represent their country, a new record for Wales and the club. During the season, a further three players were to be awarded caps. This was to prove a heavy commitment. The second home match of the season saw Notts County visit the Vetch. The crowd had dropped somewhat from the Leeds game, with just over 14,000 turning up. Following close efforts from both sides in the opening stages of the match, Alan Curtis opened the scoring after a goalmouth scramble. Swansea continued to press forward, forcing several fine saves from County's Yugoslav goalkeeper Radia Vramovic. However, the crowd didn't have long to wait before Leighton James increased the lead with a looping header. Swansea began the second half in attacking mood and Leighton James should have made it three when he broke clear, but he shot straight at the goalkeeper. Alan Curtis's fine run was rewarded when his cross was put in at close range by Bob Latchford to make it 3-0. Knots were unlucky not to pull one back when this effort was cleared off the line, but they were soon to narrow the deficit when they were awarded a penalty. Encouraged by that, County continued to keep Di Davis at full stretch and brought the score back to 3-2 when Davis was caught off his line. Swansea, though, held on until the final whistle to record their third win of the season. The league table had the Swans in second position following that defeat of Notts County, just one point behind West Ham. In the next game, on the 19th of September, Swansea sustained their second defeat when they went down 1-0 at Manchester United. But better performances were to be seen as they embarked on an unbeaten run of five matches. Swansea hadn't lost at home in the league, but Spurs hadn't lost away, so something had to give, and early on it was Swansea who looked the more vulnerable. Max Thompson was on hand to clear a dangerous cross, and then Steve Archibald shot narrowly wide. Robbie James had a chance to put Swansea into the lead, but Ray Clements saved. Ozzy Ardiles showed the class of the Spurs side when he got out of trouble well. Following the interval, Leighton James was again in the thick of the action, but his final shot was easily saved. By now, Swansea were well in the game, and after 18 minutes of the second half, Robbie James gave Swansea the lead, volleying in from 12 yards. Two minutes later, Spurs drew level when they were awarded a penalty. Glenn Hoddle equalising from the spot. Fifteen minutes from time, Alan Curtis made the score 2-1 when he beat Clements with a shot from 25 yards. Tottenham's last chance came from Mark Falco 
but Di Davis was again on hand to save. Four days later, Swansea were at home to Sunderland and seemed to have taken the lead. However, this fine effort was ruled out for offside. In the second half, Leighton James made a good run and cross, and following a goal-mouth scramble, Alan Curtis made it 1-0. James continued to torment the Sunderland defence and following another fine run, he was brought down in the box. A penalty resulted and it was James himself who stepped up to make the final score 2-0. The 3rd of October had been keenly awaited by Toshak ever since the fixture list had been issued. It was a proud day for him as he led the team out at Anfield. However, that week had seen the death of the legendary Bill Shankly, a major blow to Toshak who had relied for advice on his former manager. He signed me when I was 20 years of age, uh, took me to Liverpool and um, everything I've learned, I've learned from him, I studied him, I watched him. And you know, he's, he, even as, as a player and as a manager, I, uh, I owe him everything, really. I can't say much more. Ball picked up by Mahoney. That's a good ball through to Latchford. And a fine piece of goalkeeping by Grobila. Oh, what is that? It should be a penalty. There really was not too much danger for Liverpool and Thompson with a foul on Robinson, giving a chance for Swansea to open the score. Robilla looks to be injured a little, taking his time before coming back to face Leighton James. Leighton James, who's usually pretty deadly for the spot, scored against Sunderland last Saturday. A long one. And a goal. A beautiful goal. Nicely slotted. Leighton James delighted. Swansea go into the lead. Good touch, Curtis with a chance, and it still might get there. He brought it back, Curtis. Oh, off the line by Phil Thompson. That was quite miraculous. Swansea still on the attack, though. Robbie James with a cross. A little chance or two for Swansea to increase their lead. Alan Curtis had two chances. The second one headed off the line, the line quite beautifully by Phil Thompson. Touch by Johnson Lee and unlucky to slip. The slip giving Rykovic time to get a foot to that cross to concede a corner kick. Short one, Phil Neal. Johnson. Oh, that's a good ball off the line. That's the average, I think. Yes, it was. So a nice piece of organization by Swansea. That's the average off the line from Johnson. Marvellous stop there by Jamal Hadziabdic. He certainly was the savior of the Swansea side on that occasion. Turn 
Bill Neal, good header, McDermott. Typical Liverpool play. Di Davis equal to the shot. And that's the man who hit it, McDermott, Terry McDermott. Nice turn by Robbie James. Neil Robinson backing him up on the right. Thompson, and he could drop nicely for Latchford. And he makes it pay. Bob Latchford. And how pleased he is to score on his return to Merseyside. The cross coming in from Robinson on the right. Thompson didn't clear it very well. It dropped rather nicely, and Latchford was quick enough to stick it in. Swansea City, two goals in the clear. McDermott, good ball. Dalglish, across the face. Whelan, he did well. Penalty. Neil Robinson looking disconsolate, having to make the challenge and getting there a bit late. The foul on Whelan, giving Liverpool the chance to get one back. McDermott, the man to take it. Well, Di Davis almost got there. But Liverpool instead get one back. That's the scorer, Terry McDermott. So 2 1 it is with 13 minutes gone in the second half. Oh, that's a fine ball and bad positioning by Hansi Adwich. Good cross. Dalglish is there. Di Davis. Taking out McDermott and a penalty to Liverpool again. And some of those Swansea players can't believe it. Can McDermott make it too? Plenty of encouragement from the cop. His first one wasn't hit all that well. He does. 2-2 two, two it is. And what's happening there? Well, I can't imagine. They all seem to be having a go at Di Davis. McDermott finding himself tangled in the net behind the goal. Arnold Chandler having words with his linesman. But Di Davis goes into the book for what he did to McDermott after he ran in after scoring. Arsenal were first to make a move when Di Davis produced the first of a number of fine saves. Arsenal almost took an early lead and it took the combined talents of Latchford and Reykjavik to clear off the line. At the other end, Alan Curtis tested Pat Jennings, who was almost deceived by an awkward deflection. Leighton James then began and finished the move which led to Swansea taking the lead. In the second half, Bob Latchford just failed to find the net. For a moment, it looked as though the Gunners had drawn level, but fortunately for Swansea, the referee had spotted a handball infringement. 
Then Di Davis saved brilliantly from a long-range John Hollins free kick. Although not playing at their very best, Swansea looked much more creative than Arsenal. And when Robinson's cross was met by Latchford, Leighton James forced a brilliant save from Pat Jennings. Seven minutes from the end came a superb goal. From Hadzi Abdic's free kick, Max Thompson sent an unstoppable shot into the net. Having beaten Stoke City 2-1 in their next fixture, Swansea sat proudly on top of Division 1. Amongst the jubilation, there was also an announcement that the club had losses of £270,000. Cracks in their financial policy were beginning to show. To go to, obviously to the top of the first division for the first time ever, uh, it was a great occasion. Yeah, I, I suppose looking back, it, it was just, it, everything it seemed to go at such a pace. You know, we were sort of, uh, a lot of us, you know, we were sort of, we played in the fourth division. And to actually top the first division within a matter of uh, four or five years, it, it, was, it was an incredible, uh, incredible feeling, really. At Ipswich on the 7th of November, they gave what's regarded as one of their best First Division performances, winning 3-2. Of the next five games, the Swans lost three and slipped back to fourth position. In the first of those defeats, they went down 4-0 at Manchester City. Injury problems also struck in November when Jeremy Charles left the field with cartilage problems. He was to be out of the side for long periods during the remainder of the season. Gray was there as well. Robertson's coming in. Handball, Neil Robinson. Penalty. Penalty to Forrest in the last minute. The ball played across. It evaded most of the Forrest players. But Neil Robinson trying to stop John Robertson. Was it inside the area? That's what they will contest, if anything. He certainly seemed to handle it. But referee and linesman seem to have no doubts. John Robertson give Forrest victory here in the very last minute. He's so sure from the spot. And Forrest here appeared to have pulled victory right out of the fire. After the defeat by Nottingham Forest, the Swans beat Aston Villa at home 2-1. And following this result, they'd regained top position for the second time. To add to the achievements of the young manager, it was announced that he was to be awarded the MBE. The pressure of leading the division began to show as Swansea lost the next two league fixtures and were dumped out of the FA Cup by Liverpool 4-0. Toshak looked to the transfer market to lift their fortunes and he spent £160,000 to bring Ray Kennedy from Anfield to the Vetch. I still want to win, that's why I've come to Swansea. I mean, uh... If, uh, if that was the case, I probably would have, I would have been at Stoke or Sunderland fighting for survival. And this is why I, I chose Swansea to try and win the first division again and possibly to win the Welsh Cup. There's a chance that I might play in that, uh, win one of those. Uh, 
and that takes you in the cup winners club. Uh, I mean, that, that's, that's the chances that I, that, I can, that I can take. The move seemed to have the desired effect as the Swans embarked on a nine-game run in which they only conceded one goal. The first of those matches saw the highest attendance of the season as 23,900 watched Manchester United fall at the Vetch. And these two teams met in September at Old Trafford. Manchester United were on the bottom of the league. How things have changed. Swansea now really looking for a change of fortune with four defeats in their last five league matches. Only touch for Di Davis. Alberston quick to challenge. Here's Robinson. Played for Latchford, who is onside, but he had really no chance of collecting. James. Hawkins thought he'd done it with the back heel, but he hadn't. Good challenge by Gordon McQueen. The expense of the corner. Can arguably the most positive move of the match so far. Ended by the big United defender. Good run by Robbie James. Curtis and Latchwood in the area. James coming out to the 18-yard line. Is Curtis. Frank United have got everybody back. It's Murray Stick. Over doing a lot of running. Curtis. from the crowd and the foul given against Irwin Kennedy Maristic three waiting in the middle Stapleton oh that's a gift for Curtis no it's not and Stapleton trying to play it the way he was facing to give it to Gary Bailey but Bailey was well forward just able to grab it away from what looked like a gift for Curtis. <laughs> Robson hit it well. And only just wide. This fell nicely for him. He made up his mind very quickly he was going to have a go. Once they start the second half, and they haven't managed a goal now for two and a half games. <laughs> On by Stanley. Here's Latchford. Curtis. Stapleton. And the flag stays down, and here's Curtis. Went, I think, through Bailey's legs as he was going back. 55 minutes gone. And Curtis ends a personal drought, which has lasted for eight games and a bit more. And finally lifts the crowd at the vet's field to its feet. And Bailey going back was beaten by the pace of the ball around his ankles. Duxbury for United. Marustic. Owen. Manchester United beaten away in the league three times so far this season.
Rakovic. Curtis. Latchford in the middle. Leighton James. <laughs> Dear, what a wild challenge from Wilkins. And Bailey. And yes, no on the line, but put in by Robbie James. Bailey with the hand. Latchford with the shot. Robbie James with the follow in. Goalkeeper Di Davis created a club record by being unbeaten for six consecutive games overtaking the previous record held jointly by Jack Parry and Tony Millington. At the end of that sequence on the 20th of March, Swansea were once again top of the first division. On April the 17th, Manchester City came to the Vetch. Their previous meeting had resulted in Swansea going down 4-0. Be proud to be a swan has become the Swansea City motto. And the supporters here at Betchfield have every reason to have pride in a team which has never been out of the top six in its first season in the first division. The recent fortunes of these two teams really couldn't be more contrasting. Swansea, two odd goal defeats in their last 14 games. Manchester City, just one win in 10 games. And nine goals conceded in the last two. takes his place it's a corner Francis has gone to the far post Kevin Bond has come up to the near and here is Bond and he gets the flick get away by Rakovic Hartford's head up. Stanley. Oh, cleanly hits. And a beauty. An absolute beauty. Well, it was a good 25 yards. And it was a lovely strike on the ball. And going away from the despairing Alex Williams's right hand Curtis Latchford inside the cross is too strong well it looked it and it came back off the crossbar Latchford I suspect that the cross even though it caused problems, was over hit. But certainly Alex Williams was saved by his crossbar. Let's see how Bitch got away with a push. Latchford. James. Oh, I don't believe that. The booking against Nicky Reed, and I think he might justifiably claim that he went for the ball. He certainly caught Leighton James afterwards, but he won the ball first, in my opinion. Mr. Baker's opinion is rather more important, and a booking it is. And James was caught on the knee. It certainly hurt him, but it's a question of intent. And he's moving now. That's the Abditch. Uh, on that occasion, he wasn't prepared to try the shot, and yet he was better placed. Hartford looking for the quick break, so was Francis. 
Two players coming left. Francis is going to have a crack. And so did Kinsey. He looks very sharp, this Trevor Francis, and hungry for the ball. Curtis. so much and it was only a whisker away from hitting the post and coming out which would have been an embarrassment to Williams Kinsey Francis well aware of the run by May Branson coming behind looking for Reeves and Francis is already making play at the shot Robbie James going like a tank just inside him. And Kennedy is now unmarked, but Curtis wants it all alone. And the goalkeeper, who was right up almost by the penalty spot, made a good save. Curtis may be a little bit greedy. Maristic. James. And the goalkeeper recovered his ground remarkably well. Curtis. Ever available. Kennedy. Swansea must feel that the balance of play is deserving of a second goal in their favour. To taken down by Maroostic. Stanley's going to have another crack. Robbie James. And I think that's where we'll frame it. I don't think that Curtis needed the final touch. And indeed, the suggestion was, as they all go to congratulate Latchford, that they all feel it was Latchford's goal. And the second goal has arrived with nine minutes of the first half remaining. Nice play on the right. Robbie James involved from uh, Gary Stanley and that's what shot was in I think as Curtis came in on the far post McDonald Francis and Vakovic leading the charge to Curtis Vakovic wants it back and here is Leighton James. Go kick. Seem to have so much space. And they've been breaking with not inconsiderable speed. Stevenson's come forward. James already there. Akovic is also forward. There's James. Reed's header. Marustic. Five waiting in the middle. And it was only just wide. James. Stanley. James, and we can have a crack from there. Came off Caden. It's the sort of range that he likes. Up comes Stanley. Well taken by Reeves. And here's a chance for Curtis. Opportunity. Williams 
second half, partly because of a tightening up by Manchester City. But even so, a thoroughly convincing victory by Swansea City. But they're only human beings in the first division. Nothing more, nothing less. And um, we started off with a 5-1 win on the opening day. And ever since, we've never been out the top six. Uh, we're, a, we're a very good side um, that I think will get better. The players there have been thrown together and some of them don't know each other's names. You could see the way two people are challenging for the same ball and that must only get better. Of the last six games, the Swans won only once, leaving them in sixth position. A very creditable outcome of any team's first season in the Premier Division. But there were some who felt that the championship had been within their grasp. The manager, team and fans had all come a long way since the spring of 1978 when John Toshak had arrived at the Vetch, a journey that will never be forgotten and rarely equaled. As a manager, that you should ne never let anybody make you do something that you don't want to do. You'll make enemies and you'll upset people, but you have a job to do and you have to do it, do it the way that you think is right. Thank you.